happy, uneasy, dissatisfied, there is a great disturbance, causing affliction, to this frail and broken mind. Oh yeah, what is going on? Happy Friday to you all. Thanks for joining me. Oh, it's good to be back after WonderCon last weekend. It is good to be back. And I got lots to share. So uh, let's jump into it. Welcome, Hojo. What's going on? He was first. He was first. Hojo was first. Nancy Moon from the Mythicals. Indeed. Need to wait until he goes live, Hojo. And he's usually pretty prompt. Indeed, I am. But don't worry. Hojo said he doesn't have anything else to do. Except when I went live, he's not even there. He's not even here. There he goes. There you are. You're back. Okay. Good deal. Amanda B jumped in for you and got Nancy Moon in there for you. Um, so it's all good. You still got it. You got Nancy Moon. All right. So that's what we're drawing today for Fan Art Friday. Yeah, so just to go over the rules again, once we go live, then it's the first person to drop a name, not before then, and uh, you know how it goes. So no worries, man. Um, phone reception issues, I gotcha. No problem. Yeah, so just be the first after I go live, and it is yours. You get your drawing, and uh, if you want it, I'll give you the original artwork. Just pay the shipping and handling. It's uh, $5, which I might bump it up because prices are going up for everything. But uh, $5. That's all you need to pay me. PayPal link is in the description, and I will send you the original artwork. So let's get into it. So um, let me show you. Let's do some show and tell. So I went to WonderCon. It was, a, it was a decent show. It wasn't as great as years past, but um, got some fun stuff to show you guys. Of course, when I'm there, I got to get some stuff. So this year, I picked up some John Boy Myers art covers. Here you go. Here's a Venom. And a snake eyes. So excited to check this out. This is Rob Liefeld's work. He did some snake eyes. So I want to check that out. I have not read that. So I picked those up. I love his his style of his art. So there he goes. John Boy Myers. Got some of that. I sat next to the man, the myth, the legend, Larry Houston. So he is the producer and director on the X-Men show that we all grew up with and loved. So I got him to sign one of my X-Men prints. It's my big panoramic x-men print it's huge um so he signed this for me and uh so that was pretty awesome he uh he's also worked on the ninja turtles storyboarding for the original 80s cartoon transformers he worked on the gi joe movie uh exo squad which i really enjoyed growing up um man what else um he worked on the care bears as well which you know you guys might not care about that but he worked on the Care Bears. So anyway, I got to sit next to him. I got to pick his brain a little bit. And uh, so that was pretty fun. I'll share a little bit about that in a bit. First, we got some... Oh, wait. Hyper Potato. What's going on? What's up, man? Critical Blast is here. What's always up? Always up for a classic Batgirl. Indeed. What's up, RJ? Cross Comics in the house. What's up? What's up? How you doing, man? Yep, yep. That is a supersized X-Men print. It's like 10 by 30. It's I, I originally did it in two 11 by 17s. And um, how, are, how are you doing? Draw Batgirl. Sorry, guys. Hojo beat you to it. Today we're drawing Nancy Moon from the Mythicals. And speaking of which, Hojo, would you be able to... Um, can you like DM me via Twitter or something, a picture of the character just so I have a good reference photo? That'd be awesome, man. Thank you. Um, sure, I can find it on the Indiegogo, but... Um, and what's up, Nighthawk? But yeah, so anyway, I did this as two 11 by 17, so I put it together, and now it forms one huge, big, gigantic poster. So, boom! There you go. Hello. I still need to do the, the villain side. I need to do a villain's poster. To come! Nancy Moon for the win! Hyper Potato! I just got in my Monomyth 1, 2, and 3. Sweet! Good deal, man. Happy readings on that. It's it's pretty big. It's like, you know, three books. Uh, plus, we added extra in the um, trade paperback. Uh, so what else? So uh, after WonderCon, my family went with me. We went to the Reagan Library. 
And at the Reagan Library, they had an Auschwitz um, kind of museum going on. So I've actually been to the Holocaust Museum in Washington, but we went for more for my kids, kind of um, teach them history and what happened. And so they know all that stuff um, because, you know, how people want to rewrite history and stuff. So anyway, while I was there, picked up this sweet book, Norman Rockwell's Spirit of America. So this is a hefty book. It's got a ton of Norman Rockwell stuff in it, but I really liked it because they actually, the pictures like can slide out and you could frame them if you want. So this whole book is filled with different pictures. I mean, probably, I don't know if it's all of them, but a good deal. And uh, yeah, so all these, you can slide them out and take them out if you wanted to. So anyway, and it's got poems in it. It's got all kinds of stuff. Mark Twain right here. So this is awesome. Going to look forward to checking that out. I also got Lincoln's notebook, his very own notebook. It's got letters, speeches, journals, and poems. So there you go. Pick that up. Lincoln. I love that man. He's awesome. So anyway, there you go. That's what I did this past weekend. I was not here on uh, on the Fan Art Fridays with y'all. I do apologize. Blue Samurai Zero is here. You got here late. But you're here, though. You didn't get here at the last second, like usual. So it's all good. <laughs> so, all right. Uh these is a monomyth trade. I have to keep an eye on. Oh, oh, oh. So you, oh, you ordered. Oh, did you order them um, like via Amazon or something? Or you find them on the web, monomyth one, two, and three? Because um, I, gosh, I had them on my website. I had the trades on my website and I think I sold out. Um, so I thought you ordered the trade for me. That's why. Um, but I'm sure you can find it somewhere. Anywho. All right, guys, let's do this. Let's get into some drawing. And oh, yeah, I got some more stuff to show you, but I'll show that on my art table. Be right back. There we go. It'd help if I open my camera there. All right, all right, all right. Um, let me see if Hojo sent me any references yet. Dun, 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 dun. All right, he did. Sweet. Good deal. All right, Hojo, while I do some more show and tell, man, can you tell me a little bit about her? Um Looks like she's got some, she's got fire powers and she's also can control nature. So let me know. So I'll, it'll help me uh, when I figure out something to draw for her. All right. Um, I worked on these at WonderCon. Some new artwork. This is, uh, come on, focus. Focus. Come on, camera. Work for me. Work for me. Anything? Anything? Focus. Let's try this. Focus. No, it's not going to work. Okay, hold on. Let me stop the camera and try again. There we go. Okay. Here we go. So, uh, every so often people give me stuff to... Uh, this wasn't a commission, but they're like, Hey man, you should do a Blue Beetle. And the movie's coming out, so this would, uh, this would be a good print to have. So I'm going to work on this one. Almost done. Then I did the Spider-Man 2099. So he's going to be in the new uh, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse movie. So he looks sweet from the trailer. So I'm going to do a print of him as well. So I'm working on that. What else? I blew up my Conan picture, 11 by 17. So I'm going to, I'm going to light box this and then do pencils and inks on a new board. But here's my rough. Blew it up, changed a few things, and uh, changed her pose. I'm going to give her a new face, but there you go. This will be an 11 by 17 commission. And what else? Working on some... I just finished this for uh, Iron Age Media. He's got a magazine, and he asked me to do some illustrations. These are like a old-school London, like 1800s uh, story about a woman who dies and comes back and has to find her lover. But then she kills this dude because he's no good. 
But um, yeah, so it's kind of like Sherlock Holmesy, but uh, it was fun. I colored it up, kind of did like an old school painterly style. So I will show you that some other time. But anywho, here we are. It is Fan Art Friday time. So I'm going to leave one of these here just to focus the camera so I don't lose all that. Oh, 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 before I forget. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, so some other stuff I picked up from WonderCon. So here is another uh, X-Men image. Hold on, let me take this out. Da, 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 da. So I usually get prints at cons. It's just easier. So whoever's sitting around me, I'll just get a print from him. Uh, here's a Larry Houston X-Men print that he signed. You guys probably recognize this image. It's sweet. So I got that. Now this. This. Ha <laughs> ha. So uh, Matt Banning was there in Artist Alley. So I got a print of this X-Men Wolverine cable. This was a cover. Splat. Stephen Splat. Platt. Whatever. Splat Platt. Uh, but yeah, man, his inks are just awesome. So I've gotten some stuff from him in the past. I actually have a darkness in front of me for my drawing table that he did that Mark Silvestri drew and he inked. Uh, I just love his inks. So he gave me some some good tips on inking with a crow quill that I've tried before and I have a hard time with. And he gave me some good tips. So I'm excited to start trying again and see if I can uh, get to this level. So he was kind of encouraging because he's like, yeah, you're going to suck for like six months to a year. Uh, and he's like, you know, you got to work on your pressure with the crow quill because a lot of people just, you know, they don't want to push. And, I, and that's kind of what I found is ink it with a crow quill. It's like so tiny and small. I'm like, what the heck? Like, how do you ink big lines with this? And he's like, no, it's just you got to learn how to control the pressure and you can't be afraid to push on it. So so that was helpful for me. So maybe I'll get good at using a crow quill. We shall see. All right. Time to start drawing. Let me see what Hojo said about his character. Blue Beetle! Yeah, 2099. Thank you, sir. Blue, blue, blue. Nighthawk is the most popular guy on this channel. He's like the norm from Cheers. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah, so for those of you guys who don't know, Hojo has his campaign up on Indiegogo. It's the Mythicals, number one. And uh, it's doing pretty good, but it could do better. So if you guys haven't checked it out, check it out. Nighthawk, if you want to find the link and post it, that'd be awesome. Or Humphrey Bear, you have a wrench, you could do it too. But uh, dun -dun 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 -dun. there you go. Norm. Okay. Um, this reference should be good. Um, I just got to figure out how I'm going to draw her. Find my pencil. Okay. Focus. There we go. All right. Dun, 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 dun. Here we go. All right. How am I going to draw her? How am I going to draw her? Um, so Hojo, um, it looks like she has elemental power. She's able to like manipulate stuff. Is that correct? I want to, I could put some fire in her hands, but I want to, if I know more, I can kind of figure out maybe something a little cooler, maybe. Um, yeah. Tell us about her, man. Is she a like an elemental? Is she a mutant? Is she just an awesome superhero? This 
This is the rough stage, so I need to be a little more rough. Got to find those happy mistakes. Um, I'm going to do a full body, and I can't see her legs, so I'm going to assume she's got jeans and boots, so I hope that's cool. <laughs> if not, then I might need another reference. But uh, she looks like she'd wear some jeans and boots. <laughs> Doesn't look like she's wearing a skirt or like, you know, sneakers. I'm going to have her little necklace thing flying over here. So there's the pose. So let me darken this in a bit. And let's put the hand right about there, something like that. Let's make this a little longer. Ah, come on. Seems like moving on its own. Okay, okay. Hmm, let's see here. Hold on a second. Making a weird noise. <laughs> Mythical is a blanket term for anyone with supernatural abilities, vampires, werewolves, magicians, skinwalkers. Awesome. Yes, in the first issue, she only has the plant powers, but it grows to all four elements. Nice. So, okay. So if I did some fire, it'd be cool. Is that cool? Dun, 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 dun. Cheers was a sitcom. <laughs> Does Nighthawk not know what Cheers is? Come on, Nighthawk. Sitcom that was really popular even after it ended. Cliff and Norm were regulars at the bar. Cliff was a postman. Everyone always greeted Norm happily. Yeah. Uh, Rip jeans like a Def Leppard group me groupie group me. Hello, <laughs> cool. All right, good deal. Yeah, man, you don't know about Cheers? Come on, that was I'm trying to remember the name of the the main guy. Um, gosh, I don't remember their names. 
I want to say Tony Danza, but that he was from uh, the other show. Tony Danza, he was from the other one, right? Or was that him? Am I thinking? Uh, yeah, I don't remember their names. Christy Alley, right? She was in it. Christy Alley. Remember, she was in uh, Look Who's Talking, John Travolta. That was a fun movie back in the day. I'm going to give her like high boots. I'm just going to just going to go with it. All right. Dun, 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 dun. Fix this hand. see well here you know what i will do uh this will give me something to do in the back so i'm gonna do like a plant just like popping out of the ground that she's kind of manipulating bam there we go give me some background something going on and then uh We'll throw some fire in this hand. This will be, let's see, back here. And Hojo, your your campaign is shadow banned as well, right? Do you have a shadow ban on your campaign? Um, I know a lot of campaigns do. Mine does. I'm assuming yours does as well. I think you mentioned that. Okay. Oh, yeah. She's got... Let's see. So... Her shirt is a little shorter. Her belly is sticking out. Pants right over the hips. All right. All right. Let's see here. All right, time to draw the face. Let's draw the face. It's kind of an upward shot, but not. So let's see if I can not mess this up. <laughs> let's see here. That's an awesome cover, by the way. Donald Delay did a nice job. All right. Dun, 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 dun. Let's do the other side of her hair there.
All right. There we go. I think that shall do it. Cool deal. All right, that is my rough. If we could see that okay. Let me check the chat, see where it's at, and then we will start on the inkings. All right. Stay there. Stay put. Don't go anywhere. Gary Shipman Art in the house. What's going on, Gary? How you doing, man? I can't seem to recollect this. What can you not recollect, Jeremy? Voice text is killing me today. I swear I have an editor for my book. <laughs> uh, Gary has a shadow ban himself. Shadow bane is an appropriate term. It is a bane. Um... Woody Harrelson's dad was in jail for murder? What? Was this on the show? Was this on Cheers? What is this? What are we talking about? Um, Chrissy Alley is married to Parker Stevenson, who's played who played Frank Hardy from the Hardy Boys TV show. All right. Ted Danson, thank you. Yeah. Is that what I said? What did I say? I said Tony Danza. Yeah, yeah. That was the other guy. That was the Fonz, right? Who's the Fonz? Uh, We're saying that you're Cliff and Nighthawk is Norm. Okay. All right. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. I don't want to be Cliff. Okay. There you go, guys. Hojo's pitch for you. Nancy Moon and Level M, a convert, a covert strike team comprised of creatures from myth and legend. There you go. Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Okay. All right. Bum, bum. If she won the normal college grad tickets to this world... And has everything turned upside down when she finds out monsters are real. Okay. She won the normal... Okay. That's probably where your text messaging went wonky. <laughs> but I got gotcha. you. Jed Clampett? What? Man. All right. Just messing around. Come on. Click on it, dude. There you go. Yes, Eric reads the chat backwards, exposes hidden messages that way. Yeah, it's it's more fun that way. I don't know how far behind I am, so I just read the first thing I see. It's not it's fun, you know. Uh ba -ba -ba. okay. Who's the boss? That's it. That's right. Da -da -da. Henry Winkler was the Fonz. Tony Danza was on Taxi and Who's the Boss. Tony Danza. Okay. I'm all confused, man. I don't know. I got to go look at my 80s movies and TV shows again. <laughs> all right. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Drop a link for the peeps. Yeah, Nighthawk, since you're my... You and uh, Humphrey Bear, you're my wrenches, so if you could find the link to... Well, it's going to be hard to find, but if you go on Hojo's uh, Twitter, you can find the link to his campaign and post it in the chat for everybody, if you wouldn't mind. And as I like to joke, if you want to keep your wrench, you got to work for it. So please do that for me, Nighthawk. I appreciate it, man. Or we could give it to Humphrey Bear. 
Come on, Humphrey Bear. What have you done for me lately, man? Do something, man. Go get that link. All right. Dun, dun, dun. All right. So Nancy Moon is a college grad. So dun, dun, dun. let's see here. She's got a tank top on. Bum, bum, bum. All right. So what were your inspirations, Hojo, for the mythicals? What were your inspirations? What'd you what'd you dig growing up? Monster stuff. What kind of inspirations you got? Just curious. All right. All right. Okay. Let's start with the inkings. All right. Thank you guys all for hanging out today. Please like and share the video if you can. I appreciate it. Um, let's see. Get rid of my pencil. And all right. All right. I'm going to start with some background stuff just because get a little warmed up. Draw some fun plants. I can tell my number five pen is not uh, it's not behaving wonderfully right now. So that's good to know at the outset, rather than you know when I start inking her face or something. It's good to know. So, uh, Matt Banning, when I asked him about the crow quill, because I asked him what he inks with, and he said he started out his brush, and now he is mainly crow quill. And he actually had an Aaron Lepresti uh, thing he inked. I saw at his table. He had some original artwork. I forget what book it was, but uh, it was really nice. And his inks look really good over Aaron Lepresti's work. So I was just asking him what he was inking with, and... Uh, but anyway, he said that the crow quill, he mainly, he started using it on backgrounds to just kind of get the hang of it. And, um, but he didn't start using it fully until uh, he started working with Mark Silvestri at Top Cow. So that's, once he got over there, that's when he started with the crow quill, like full time. Uh, but he said it's took a long time to just get the hang of it. And he just used, did backgrounds with it till he got the hang of it, which is smart. You know, sometimes mistakes in the backgrounds don't show up a whole lot. So that's very smart. So I think I might I might do that because I tried I tried it on a He-Man piece I was inking and uh, it was just so thin. And when I first tried using it, it was like I couldn't even get the ink to flow. So that could have been just the nib itself. But um, but I went out and I bought myself a 102. I think is what all the pros use and it just it was not working for me so I'm like what the heck because you get those great lines with the crow quill that uh, I try and mimic with these pens but you know you can only do so much you can only do so much but uh so I do the brush with my holding lines and then I do the microns Try and build up my lines little by little. Get some thorns in there. Boop. Yeah, so I sat next to Larry Houston. He was very nice. His wife was there with him. Um, I just loved his passion, man. Just talking about the X-Men. You could just talk about it all day. I need to look up some... He was on a panel 
which of course I couldn't go to because I'm stuck at my table. Um, but man, I would love to just hear him and just talk about the X-Men and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, so I got to hear a little bit of the stories he was sharing from the people that would come up to his booth. And, uh, but what, what, uh, I was interested in, so he's actually a, um, what do you call it? He's a, um, bum, bum, bum. uh, consultant. He's a consultant on the new Disney, uh, X-Men 97 show. And so I was like, okay, I recently read an article from the new producer of the show. And uh, he's a black gentleman who happens to be gay. And he was like, yeah, you know, my, I'm going to, you know, this X-Men show will be informed by my, you know, whatever. And he mentioned social justice and blah, 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 and all that crap. And so I was like, all right, here's Larry Houston. Let me ask him a question about that. So before we left, I'm like, hey, man. So, you know, I, I grew up watching the X-Men and a lot of those shows, you know, Transformers, G.I. Joe, Ninja Turtles. And I was like, I don't remember them being very political, you know, in nature. And, you know, so I was just curious, um, you know, with this new guy taking it on, he mentioned it'd be informed by his, you know, politics, whatever, social justice, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know, like, uh, so I was just like, you know, I don't remember any of the other shows being like that so is this new x-men going to be like the old x-men or is it going to be you know political and blah 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 and man i kind of felt bad because he was like you could tell he was struggling to answer but basically what he said was his vision he he did his vision for the x-men you know in the 90s um this will be the other guy's vision uh but he did say that um and it was funny because he was like, I feel like I'm dancing on a tightrope here. I don't know what to say or how to answer. But he's like, uh, he's seen all the episodes, actually. And he said he doesn't remember anything like too crazy. But um, that's what he said. So, you know, we shall see. I, I have a feeling, you know, there's going to be a lot of stupid crap in there that, uh, you know, it's going to kill it. But. Again, we shall see. So, I mean, you know, they can't help themselves. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so there you go. So, that's what I found out. Because I was very curious. You know, our the shows we grew up with, they were not at all political. They were not at all, you know, trying to get their agenda across or whatever. It was just good, clean fun. And uh, that's what the X-Men was. It wasn't, you know, beating you over the head with, you know, a message. And I don't even know when the whole, you know, oh, the X-Men is, you know, it's like an allegory for gay people and they're a subculture and they're discriminated against. I don't even know when that all happened and came out. Um, I feel like that wasn't until like the 2000s. But uh, so anyway, it would be a shame if this new X-Men is just inundated with that stuff which it probably will be but uh yeah i was just curious so there you go that's what i that's what i found okay the plant looks pretty good Okay, there is a cool plant. Let's check the chat. The mythicals. The mythicals. Oh, okay, nice. It is searchable. It's not shadow banned. Good deal. All right, there you go. Luke's in the house. What's going on, Luke? How you doing, man? Do, 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 do. Take care, Gary, and oh, nope. Blue's still here. Gary had to leave. All right. 
좀 들어가면 이런 이런. All right, Hojo's inspirations. Always a big fan of the classic monster movies, and I was 10 years old. Uh, image came out. There you go. Big fan of Peter David and Chris Claremont. Oh, yeah. Chris Claremont, some of my favorite X-Men stories. All right. There it is. Woohoo! There you go. We didn't care about politics. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Okay, that catches us up. All right, let's add a few more deets on this guy. Oh, he also mentioned, uh, he said the budget for his show, like the, the budget now for the this new X-Men on Disney Plus is like 10 times what his budget was back in the day. Um, and he said they've been working on it for, I think, two years. Um I don't remember if he said it took him, I think he said when he was working on it, uh, it took him nine months to do one episode. I, th I believe that's what he said. I don't think he said the season. I think he said the episode. So nine months for one episode. So they had to probably have to get a big head start. Nine months. That can't be right, though. Nine months for one episode? That would be like forever and ever to get the whole thing out. Maybe he said a season. I, I, I thought he said a, an episode, but anywho, like I said, I want to, I'm sure I could YouTube and find some videos of him talking about it on a panel, but uh, really cool guy. Really fun to just sit next to him and listen to the stories and all that good stuff. All right, got to give her her bracelets. She's got bracelets. he said like you know when he was working on it they didn't have the internet at the time and so he'd bring in his stack of comics and that's what they would the, the writers and everybody would go through and uh that was their that was their inspiration that's where they got their stuff from so he said some of the stories they had to kind of adapt a little bit to um you know the show but they weren't as crazily adapted as the movies. Uh, they stuck pretty close to them as they could. But, you know, he also said they're very, they're kind of constrained with the characters. So they went with four females and four males. That's why, you know, it was only a few of the characters. It wasn't like all of them. But he's like, you can only do so much, you know, in, in a TV show when you're constricted by time. And, you know, so they, they settled on four and four, four females, four males. And, uh, yeah, so, but, you know, a lot of people ask, well, how come Colossus wasn't in there and how come blah, blah, blah. And it's just, you know, time constraints. And then you want to tell a good story and you got to be able to develop all those characters and, you know, so there you go. Like Shadow Century. Gosh, I've got eight characters one two three four five six yeah seven eight characters just on the shadow century alone if you count jason augustine and then you got all the hellborn gosh it's that's a lot of characters segue into why i'm doing shadow century origins so that way i can slow down and kind of give you guys a backstory on a lot of these characters and 
flush them out a little bit, find out how they got their powers and all that good stuff. All right, inking with the brush, working on my holding lines. So is anybody, we actually watched, so last last Fan Art Friday, we talked about The Darkest Hour, about uh, Winston Churchill, and we actually watched that last night. And uh, it was kind of different than what I remembered, but, uh, but yeah, but it was good. Maybe a little slower, like it's... Once it gets rolling, it's it's good, but it's uh you know it's all about Winston Churchill after he became prime minister and then all that he had to go through and gosh everybody was against him or like you know hated his politics and hated his stance against and like they didn't like that he wanted to go to war against Germany and he wanted to fight and they were like no talk peace again let's talk some more peace and he's like that didn't work the first time. With Neville Chamberlain, guys, he's like, you don't, you don't negotiate with a, a tiger when your head's in its mouth. <laughs> so that is through. So anyway, really good. So our next uh, movie we want to want to watch is Dunkirk. So watching those two together, it kind of makes Dunkirk more uh, exciting. Almost, you kind of get the full story and you understand how. Uh, dire it was for them to get those 300,000 soldiers off the beach at Dunkirk. <clears throat> so that was like pretty much all of Europe's fighting force was stuck on the beach there. And if, if they all died, that would have been, they would, Europe would have been done for all their military might would have been gone. So, uh, yeah. All right, I don't like this five, but I keep using it. I don't know why. Not loving the lines it's putting down. <clears throat> All right. My three, on the other hand, is working very nicely. Put down very nice lines. There's that. Bum, 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 bum. All 
Um, I was going to be on with Clayton Barton tonight um, on his channel to promote Shadow Century with him since he's working on it too. Um, but we had to reschedule till, till Sunday. So if you guys want to check that out, I will post the link and all that good stuff come Sunday. So we've been meaning to get together, uh, but he's been busy finishing up another project. And so we can finally do a stream and talk about his process and uh, everything with Shadow Century Origins. And he recently got back to me. I added another page, actually. I wanted to do a full page spread of uh, Satan in hell. And so he finally got that to me. And it looks sick. So that will be fun to ink. Dun, 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 dun. So in Shadow Century Origins, you'll see how what happens when uh, a Hellborn becomes a Hellborn. And uh, so Hopscotch comes face to face with satan himself well you know the fictitious one i don't know what he looks like thankfully <laughs> but it's fun to uh conceptualize what he might look like All right, there's that. Let me check the chat, see where it's at. Pixel Trader going on, what's going on? Ba -da -ba -ba. Again, I'm starting from the bottom. I will go back to the top, but he says I'm good. Andy Crown is still kicking butt and about to launch a new section with promo issues and free comics and Little Mermaid launches May 19th. Awesome. Speaking of which, I need to start on the cover for you. Ba -da 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 -da. Oh, here we go. I've been learning more about the 1930s and 50s recently when I can on YouTube videos and finally saw the whole first and only season of Mark Miller's show called Jupiter Legacy. Uh -huh. All right. I think I, I think I watched that. I don't know if I finished it. I think I did. But yeah. Can't say it was spectacular, but you know, it has good points, I think. Ha uh -huh. Yeah, man, you are here. Not not right before I stop. You're you're good. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Hojo. Appreciate it, man. Um, Warrior Smurf, Smurf Henry Winkler was the Fonz. Thank you. Um. All right. Good deal. All right. One second, I'll be right back. I gotta find a tissue or something. I gotta blow my nose. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back. All right. All right. So here's my three. Let's ink her face. Oh, yeah. She has a beauty mark. I think it's on her upper. That's her left. My right. Beauty mark. Boom. Right there. All right, guys, 
I have a question for you. You can help me out with this. I have uh, some artwork that I want to get colored and make a new make a new print. Um, I have a colorist who is available, and they're asking me if I have anything for them. I'm like, you know what? I could probably find something for you. So I have. So here are my options for prints to do next. I have a Gambit and Rogue. I think it's from Drawn and Quartered. I think all these are from Drawn and Quartered, actually. Um, I've got a Gambit and Rogue. I've got a Zatanna. That's pretty nice, uh, which I think you guys have seen. I think it was a sketch cover that I did, yeah. Um, then I have um, Thundercats. And then I have a Masters of the Universe from Drawn and Quartered. So there you go. Those are your options. If you were going to pick one... Or let's say if you were going to buy a print, which print would you want? Master of the Universe, Thundercats, Zatanna, or Gambit and Rogue? I'm going to guess it's not Gambit and Rogue. Although those are cool characters, but I think most of the chicks and the women want the Gambit and Rogue. And I think most of my audience is male right now. So there you go. <laughs> And it's kind of cheesy. It's like, you know, she's trying to fly away and he's grabbing her by the belt. And he's like, you know, nope, give me a kiss, share. You know, that kind of thing. So I guess it's probably not Gambit and Rogue. Just one little kiss, share. Give me a kiss, 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 kiss. Gambit, man, always trying to get a kiss from Rogue. That was, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. I'm still sad we never got to see a, a good live action Gambit. Although I did like Taylor Kitsch's uh, character in the uh, Wolverine Origins. I dig him as a, an actor, but, you know, we never really got to see him in costume or anything, which would have been awesome. <laughs> He was recently in um, that show at Chris Pratt that Amazon Prime did that I can't think of right now, but uh, I like his, I like him a lot. John Carter was really good. I really like that. Very underrated movie, I thought. Okay, let's go in with some black. All right, let's see. Let's see what you guys voted on. We've got we've got a terminal list. No, that's not it. But that yep, that's the show I was thinking of. Thank you. Um I like the X-Men Eric, and I'm a guy, so well I know that, but I'm just saying, would you if you had your choice between buying a print of Rogue and Gambit or Masters of the Universe, Thundercats, or Zatanna. Which one would you put your money on, though? That's the question. That's the question. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Here we go. Let me do this. Bum, bum, bum. Eight people watching. All right. Eight people. I need your input. I'm going to share my screen. Let me get this. Let me see if I've got them all up. Here we go. There's that. Okay, so Zatanna is gone. Let me find Zatanna again. I'll show you each one, so then you can you can vote after seeing it. Maybe that'll help you. Let's see if it's gonna work. It's going slow. It's going slow. I got a lot open on my Photoshop right now. Usually, Streamyards doesn't like me when I try and stream and do Photoshop stuff. <laughs> All right, let's see if this will work. 
Let's see. Share. Here we go. Bada boom. All right. So this is the uh, Masters of the Universe. This is from Drawn and Quartered. So I could get this one colored. Here is, uh, nope, that's not Zatanna. Uh, Zatanna was on here, but I took her off. Okay, so here's the Thundercats one, which has already been flatted. And here is Gambit and Rogue. There you go. And now, let's see, let me find... Oh, there she is. Boom. So there's the Zatanna one. Let me see it. if it's going to... Is that working? Yep, there we go. Go full screen. All right. So if you had your choice, you're going to put your money on something, would you buy the Zatanna print, the He-Man Masters of the Universe print, or the Thundercats print, <laughs> or would you go with Gambit and Rogue? There you go. So this is from fan art. No, no, no. Is this fan art? No, this was uh, drawn and quartered. So there you go. Which one? I would love to hear from you. Amanda B. Still going with the Masters of the Universe. Oh, snap. Great Masters of the Universe. All right. Warrior Smurf goes for Thundercats. Um, Hyper Potato. Going with the M Masters of the Universe, indeed. Yeah, I think because I have I have another Thundercats print, which is pretty cool, um, which has everybody in it. So I think Masters of the Universe would be would be good. So I think that would be good. All right, I'm going with that then. I'm going with that. I just got to figure out what happened because I could have swore. So this is. Zatanna, but that's not... Is this... Yeah, this is not the one... Huh. Gotta find out what happened to it. Might have missaved it or something. Alright, anywho. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Thank you for your votes. Dun, 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 dun. I think you know. Alright. Alright, almost done. Let's keep going on this. Okay, so. Bring this back more, y'all. Anybody seen John Wick 4 yet? It's out, right? I think that's next on my list of movies to see. John Wick and then Shazam. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a movie movie guy. When I need to get out and just kind of unwind and relax, I like to go see a movie. That's what I like to do. So, John Wick's next on my list. Three was like, eh. But one and two are awesome. So hopefully this one is uh, better than number three. One boot down. No, 
now for the next one. Boots are like one of those things like I I don't dread it, but it's like uh, a boot, all the laces. Like, uh, I don't look forward to it. I'll put it that way. It's like, oh, a boot. <laughs> they're kind of fun, but they're, you know, just a lot of little details and stuff. All the laces. But when you draw it good, it looks cool. And feet are definitely feet, shoes, boots, all that stuff, man. It's it's not the easiest to draw. So Nighthawk, you need to work on an illustration with some boots and some hands. I want to see some good boots and hands. From you sir that's your homework assignment or if you've already drawn some I'd love to see your best show me your best be like here's my best boot my best foot love to see it Okay, next. Okay, let me do this other side of her leg here. Not going to use a five. Learn my lesson with that. Let me find curve two. A nice curve. There we go. Nice stick to thin there. But let me fix this. This is a little. Kind of jaggedy here. Yeah, it's a little better. All right, let's see. I still got to finish her face. I went up there to do her face, and look, I'm down at her feet again. What's going on? I'm all over the place. It's like how I read my comments on StreamYards and YouTube. I'm just all over the place, man. That's just how I roll. And let's just go all the way here. Thank you. 
All right. Let's see here. I'm not going to color in all these spaces, but just to kind of get a little bit of detail in there. She's like, ooh, look at my boots. They are so pretty. I wear my boots when I fight the monsters. All right, I'm not going to color the bottom. I'm going to leave that. And this one, let's go all the way back in the front. Okay, okay, looks good there. Let's add some shadows. Okay, let's do something like that over here. Okay. Color the belt black. It's good to have those areas of contrast. Some blacks to give it some some points of interest, I guess. When it's all just line art, it kind of loses a little bit of the the depth, I think, of the drawing. So I got some areas of interest for your eyeball to hook onto. Here we go. Okay. Gotta finish your face. Let's see. Oh. Earrings.
Brush is always good for hair. Get those wispy lines. Picking out the highlights in her hair. If I wanted to, I could go the quick route and then just color it all black and then go in with a white out pen and just kind of pick out some strands, which works, but uh, I like to go in and just pick out some little areas. Kind of do the same thing. Sometimes white out doesn't look great. Unless it's a real quick sketch. But uh so that's kind of what I save it for. Something like that. So this black, this black. There we go. Go back to the thing here. Let's see. Make sure I didn't miss anything. So I gotta do her necklace. I gotta do her face. Zen VR Duns. Okay, face first or her necklace. Let's do the face. All right. All 
she works out. She's got like a she's got a little bit of like a four pack going on or something. <laughs> <clears throat> Just hint at the stuff going on in there because their hands on fire. Okay, now I'm gonna go. Oh, I gotta do a hand too. Light touch on the nose. There we go. She's got the side glance going on. All right. Almost there. Okay, medallion time. I need my ellipticals. It looks about that big. Oh man, come on now. That is the hard part. Getting it lined up so you can make it both of them look circular. Good enough. I'll go with that. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now some little little details. Get those little nineties little flares in there. I don't know what you call these things. But they're cool. Add some definition, distinction. Add these things to buildings, to trees, you name it. Just good for whatever. Like miniature focus lines. Kind of. All right. That is it. Let me sign this puppy. So... 
Fan Art Friday, Season 2, Episode, what are we on, 7, 6, this is 6, there's only 6, what? You know what, I might have messed up, I think last week was 6, wasn't it? Anywho, I'll check, but uh, Nancy Moon from the Mythicals, check it out, it's on Indiegogo, someone posted the link, but if you could find it, just go search it again. But uh, there you go. Let's sign this, and we're good to go. Where's my eight? There we go. Get my eight. Want my eight? Twenty-three. Fan art Friday. Bam! All right. There you go. Congratulations, Hojo. Got yourself a Nancy Moon illustration. Move this over. You've been slacking, Eric, on Fan Art Fridays. I have been. I've been going places and stuff. How dare I? <laughs> Um, oh, hold on. Let me go back. How do I do this again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Boom. All right. Episode six. I got it right. Okay, good deal. I did check it. I just thought for some reason we did more than that already. We should have been on like eight, but I missed a few. Actually, nine. I think I missed three now. Nighthawk Warrior knows how many I've missed. So, let me see. Let me hit the chat real quick. Should I send you a copy? Issue one or two as a single issue, sell more copies, or would you rather do a trade paperback that collects all six issues that includes the original volume one, Origins volume one inside? Um, I don't know what would sell more, uh, but I do plan on doing. Um, sorry, heard noises that were weird. It's probably my dog. Anyway, um, I do plan to do a trade. That would collect the first story arc. So I, I plan to do collections of the story arcs. Um, so you get like the full story. And uh, yeah, so I don't know what would sell better because I have not made the trade yet. But uh, we shall see. Awesome. Thanks a million. You got it, Hojo. Glad you enjoy it. You dig it. And I will get it out to you. Um, all right. Let me see if I missed anything else. I was asking if that Nancy Moon and someone said Lara Craft. Croft. That was last week. Last week was Laura Croft. Eric did a great job on Laura. If you want to check out his past videos, he even posted a short of the sped up work. Yeah, I was finishing the, the background. That is a short on YouTube you could check out. All right. I think that is it. Here is the Mythicals link. Thank you, Nighthawk. Good deal. All right, guys. It's been fun. Hope you had a good time. Have a great weekend. And uh, thank you all for sharing out the tweet i sent out about shadow century origins it is shadow band so it's just you know you could use a little love so i appreciate it thank you and uh thank you if you've backed already i appreciate that as well um yeah i do plan to do more streams um during the week but this week was just crazy i had a commission that i needed to finish and i just kind of ran out of time but look for another stream next week during the week all right Okay, guys, have a great one. Take care, and thanks again.